Hey, this is Rampage coming to you live from the world famous comedy store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony. <laughs> Hello, everybody. What the fuck is up? Make some noise. We're here on a Monday. Get excited, lady. Fake ass excitement. Big ass pack comedy shorts. Brian Redman is here, ladies. Hey, and what's up, everyone? Yeah. We have the great Ryan J. Bell drawing tonight's episode over there. Uh, he wrote, he drew Kill Tony the book, and um, that's available at RyanJBelt.com. We have uh, so much fun stuff coming up. With Kill Tony, the show is going to be in Phoenix at Stand Up Live on April 5th, and uh, in Nashville, as you know, on April 21st. But right now, we have breaking news, a special announcement. Kill Tony will be in... Fort Wayne, Indiana on August 4th. Indiana gets their first Kill Tony. And another Kill Tony show announcement. September 29th, Fort Worth, Texas. You just got your own fucking Kill Tony. There you go. And, ready for this? Let's do it again. Hit that motherfucker again. Because, I forgot to write it down, but the one I just told you is in of all places, get ready for it, Detroit, Michigan, ladies and gentlemen. Kill Tony will be at the second annual Motor City Comedy Festival in Detroit, Michigan. That is on Saturday, September 22nd. I think the engine revving would have been a good option too for that one, but I guess we'll do that. We're also all doing stand-up comedy at the Tempe Improv after that Phoenix show, April 7th and uh, 6th and 7th and 8th. In Providence, I'm doing stand-up comedy in Providence, Spokane, San Fran, Houston, and I'm making my return to Chicago at Zanies in October. That's a special announcement, too, right there. That's awesome. So a lot of dates coming up. And, uh, oh, yeah, another one. Skankfest Weekend just announced. The Legion of Skanks are good friends. Who, by the way, you want ready for this? Hit the fucking special announcement thing again. Here you go. Next week's guests, the Legion of Skanks, Big J Ogerson and Louis J. Gomez. They have a, the first ever truly all comedian built comedy festival that they do in, of all places, New York City. And it's fucking massive. And we did it last year and had so much fun. And I, I, I cannot give you the exact date of our show, but I can tell you that the Skank Fest just announced that it is the weekend of July 14th. So that is a bunch of breaking, exciting news. And speaking of exciting news, uh, I've been having a lot of fun lately. I'm, I don't know if you guys know this. I'm married now. My sex life is great. And, uh, but for those of you having sex performance issues, they are more common than you think. Let me take it over there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you could get these like boner pills at the gas station that have a bunch of supplements in it that supposedly gets you hard, like goat feet and acorns and shit like that. And you've done that a lot. And That's I used to experience. be addicted to that, go right. to massage parlors. Or you could just get generic Viagra, but you don't have to go to a doctor. You could just go to this website, connect with a doctor online. Next thing you know, you have $20 a month worth of Viagra. That's super cheap because it's generic and you don't have to go to the doctor. Medical grade solutions with real licensed doctors offering well-known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to give you erectile without the dysfunction. Not herbal supplements, prescription solutions backed by science. Try Hims for a month today for just $5. How about that? Who loves things for five dollars? <laughs> Hell yeah. We'll get you started for just five bucks while supplies last. See website for full details. This would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or pharmacy. Instead, go to forhims.com slash kill. That's forhims.com slash kill. F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com. You guys ready to start the show or what? We're all together. I could tell this is a real Kill Tony audience. Get, we're here on a Monday. See a power a Jamie Vernon powerful hoodie out there. You can tell there's real fucking fans here, and I'm excited because this is a fan friendly episode. One of the legends, one of our absolute favorite guests on this show. He's probably done it. If I should have asked Josh this to make it a fact, but I would guess he's probably the guest that has also done this the most because yeah. I ask him the most because he is truly the best at being a guest on this show. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you one of the greatest comedians of all time, the great and powerful Dom Irera. Yeah, baby. There he is. Hello to my fellow millennials. <laughs> 
Comedy Central rated you one of the top 50 comedians of all time. Yeah, I got beat up. I got beat up by Cedric the Entertainer, too. Is that true? Yeah. How can I compete with an entertainer? All I do is stand up. He entertains. He has people over the house. <laughs> can you imagine the balls of calling yourself the entertainer? I'm going to break the walls here of comedy for a second. I'm going to tell you, I don't know if you know this, but I have purposefully set you up for that joke every time you've been you on the show. I think 17 times you've been on the show. Well, and there's a reason why. And it's because it is my favorite joke of all time. The fact that you got beat up by a real entertainer. The, the, well, <laughs> I mean, that's his joke. I'm not saying that the he's great, not a real entertainer. The greatest thing about getting older is I have, I have no recollection of it at all. Yeah. So it's, it's always fresh and new to me. Absolutely. I Just feel like the same you are. Way. Hold me. Exactly. Thanks to L.A. Speedweed, I also have short-term memory loss. <sighs> Friends over. Use the code word chuckle puffer for 15 off your next cannabis order. Chuckle puffer. <laughs> L.A. Speedweed. Uh, we have a band on this show, as you know, Dom. That's why when I have you on now, I like to just do it solo because you're such a monster that we can just have fun with the band and with you. And uh, we love the band. Uh, it's the best damn band in the land. I love these guys. It's the Kill Tony Band. It's Pat Reagan, Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Jimenez, and Chroma Chris. Every week, they commit to different characters, and I never know what they're going to be. We don't know. But throughout the episode, they make jokes through those characters. They're a few days oh, late. Oh, my God. It is clearly a St. Patty's Day celebration. They are leprechauns today. Jeremiah, his body is shaped so weird. I mean, there's no real right way to describe the way Jeremiah is shaped at all times. It's, like, skinny, but, like, unhealthy, but... It's good. Jeremiah's on the show. They all have, for you podcast listeners, they all have very realistic beards on their faces. Uh, blonde beards. Leprechaun, St. Patrick's Day. How's it going over there? Uh, quite well, Tony. Quite well. <laughs> wow. You're we just celebrated one of our uh, uh, favorite pastime holidays the other day. And in Ireland, every day is St. Patty's Day. <laughs> well, I'm a we got pretty wasted, I'll tell you that, Tony. You did? What happened? I got so drunk, I couldn't get my shillelagh hard. Go <laughs> <laughs> to For Hims. For Hims.com will help you get your shillelagh all back in order. I got so drunk, James Joyce's novel started making sense. <laughs> oh, wow. Fuck yeah. That's for a select few I, out there. I got so drunk, I read a Tom Clancy novel backwards. <laughs> wow. How about this uh, Irish full-blown Mexican sitting behind you guys? That's Lepra X Con for you. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Joelberg is here, ladies and gentlemen. When he kills, you're supposed to chant his name. Uh, that, was, uh, that was amazing, the execution there, especially since you did it in a Jamaican accent. <laughs> that is Leprechaun Man to you. <laughs> the great Irishman back there. <laughs> Uh, I have a bucket full of comedians' names, a ton of comedians signed up tonight. Comedians, how are you guys? You excited? <laughs> Giving people opportunities. I see the great and powerful Aphrodite is here. Malcolm, we have... Missy Chris. Martinez is here. Missy Ooh, Martinez, yeah. Kill Tony royalty. I'm excited about this. Lila Hart out there, you can barely see her from here. Look at that. Um, I have a bucket full of comedians' names. You know how it works. If it's your first time here, let me tell you, you get 60 seconds uninterrupted. We're not allowed to laugh into the mic or talk about anything during that 60 seconds. It's all you. And then after that 60 seconds is up, you'll hear the sound of a cat. That means wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. Who's ready to start the show? It's Kill Tony episode probably like, I don't know. 260 or something crazy. Oh, that's right. Also, the five-year anniversary of this show is on June 18th. Wow. It'll, it's going to be absolute chaos. It's going to be the WrestleMania of Kill Tony. Uh, we're going to be announcing the new regulars on that show. Mm -hmm. That's going to be fun. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Who knows what can happen. Um, so the five-year is June 18th. Can you believe that? It's been five years of this. We were babies when it started. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to pull I, a name out of the bucket. They only had two chins back then. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Fun fact about this show was that there was, uh, I believe, on, on episode one, I believe there was like eight people in the audience, and I think six of them signed up for the show. Like they were in the bucket, and the other two people were Laney and Jerry, who sit in that booth right yeah. over there every single week for five years. You could watch every episode, too. Every single episode is at DeathSquad.tv. Watch the first couple. It's weird. It's and really weird. follow the new stream. We're on Vimeo yeah. right yeah. now, DeathSquad.tv. We are live yep. streaming around the world. I pulled a name out of the bucket. You guys ready to start this shit or what? Keep it going for Jay Singh. Here we go. He's walking to the stage. Come on, one more time for Jay Singh, everybody. Fuck. Okay, I'm biting the bullet. Fuck it. Hey, um, I'm a dentist, guys. Look at this shit. I really came from work today. Uh, I saw a police officer as my patient. I did a cavity search on him, and he did a cavity search on me. That was a lot of fun. Um, so you know what's funny about dentistry is that uh, there's two main things that my, I do with my patients is that I want them to be comfortable with me and I want them not to feel anything in my patient chair. So the thing is, is I went out with a girl that knew these two things. You know, so we're vibing really well. You know, we go out, we go back to my place and we do the deed. And then she starts looking around my place and she's like, oh, what do you do for a living? I say, oh, I'm a dentist. And she goes, oh, you must be a great dentist. And I'm like, what makes you say that? And she's like, because I didn't feel a thing tonight. <laughs> I felt a wave of just people that got that I just have a tiny dick in the audience. That was a lot of fun. You know what's funny is one of my main goals in dentistry is I want to make my patients' teeth as white as possible. Like, I want them to be so white that they could colonize half the world. Fuck yeah, Jay Singh, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus, Jay, it was like pulling teeth up there tonight, huh? I know, right? Bang. Fuck yeah. You know what bothered me? Yeah. I mean, I thought you were really out of line saying the deed. I think that's so vulgar. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, you know, there's ladies in the room. You, you little I prick. apologize. Should I say I'm federally licensed to give oral exams? Because I, I can do that, too. I just well, bombed with that joke, too. Well, yes, it's true. I love that you announced it afterwards. You didn't even give me a chance to make that joke myself. Very good. Fuck yeah. You remind me of uh, Aziz Ansari. Not in, or, not in your look, in the way that you also stick your fingers in people's mouths. <laughs> Episode has started. I'm so proud of that one. Jay, how long have you been a dentist for? I'm actually in dental school. I'm not a dentist yet. I say uh, I say that I say that to help with women, but it doesn't. Get this poser off stage. <laughs> And are you like a freshman? Like, have you gone to like one semester? No, no, I'm, I've done seven semesters. I'm in, I, out of 11, so you know, I'm almost there. 7-11. Yep. You're, you're going to be there soon. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, what the fuck was that? Red Band. Red Band? Holy I shit. I set that up. Where the fuck did that come from? Red Band's a fucking math smart jokes over here? What happened to fucking poopy diapy baby? Uh. Guy's going outside his wheelhouse. I love it. It's not the red band I know. That was actually clever. Where the fuck did... <laughs> I fucking love this show. Tony, I knew that he was still in school because he didn't bring any laughing gas with him tonight. I got him in my car. Real shit. Really? Yeah. I'll talk to you later. All but right, but that's on. to rape women with. That's not for the comedy show. Uh -huh. Wow. Jay, All right. How long you been doing comedy for? About seven months. Seven months. How's it going for you? Well, awful after this performance. So your eyebrows. No, don't are... be so hard on yourself. Can I tell you, your eyebrows are perfectly chiseled. I mean, that is unbelievable. How often do you take care of those things? The edges are like incredible. I can like, tell. Like you really keep an eye on. Yeah, that. four or five days. Yeah, because if you don't do anything, that just fucking connects yeah. real quick, right? Yeah, I get mad unibrow. I bet you do. Yeah. Uh, where are you from? You sound like I'm you're... from Vegas. Wow. Oh, that's exactly where we thought you were from. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. You lucky, you lucky guys ever get lucky in uh, Vegas? No, not time or two. <laughs> you know the saying, Tony, once in Vegas shall remain a secret. <laughs> <laughs> that's my boy, P 
Patty Reagan. Ah, oh, god damn. We are just stick your shillelagh up your ass now. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Jay. Well, that's what he had good, uh, good stage presence. Yeah. He's likable. Yeah. Not particularly funny, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, you got... You I got to work on the funny part. You're yeah, right. That's, it's, it's I important. mean, seven months. You're, you you can not really have anything in seven months. So how, how many times a week do you go up? Not even I a I try baby. to go three, four times a week. That's cool. What part? What places? Uh, well, here's my first time, and then... Uh, this is your first time at the comedy store? No, first time at Kill Tony. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then um, Laugh Factory, uh, Westside Comedy Theater, uh, Fanatic Salon... Uh, I have a like question that. for you. Yes, At one point in your set, did you just assume the audience thought you had a small dick? <laughs> like, apropos of nothing, I wasn't, I, really, mean, I wasn't really listening to your set very closely, but, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, why? Um, but... Uh, but at one point it sounded like you were just like, I know now everyone here thinks I have a small dick. And it seemed like that came out of totally nowhere and that you were projecting onto the audience. I was just curious about that. <laughs> Go ahead, answer his question. No, I... Well, it's part of the joke. The joke I try to rush through, so... No, I, I... I, I know I'm also Indian, so we, we kind of have small penises. <laughs> it's, it's... Every Indian person knows that. I get a little We're feeling from the way that... Yes, Jeremiah. We're just going to blow past that, that it's a common known thing that Indian men have small penises. You didn't know that? That's no, a, how do you know that, Tony? That's, that's a thing. That's a thing. We know who have the big penises and the small penises in the comedy world. I don't know about that, Tony Hinchcliffe. Yeah. No, yeah, for sure. Indian guys are creepy, man. Uh, we fucking are. He's right. It's a pretty blanket statement. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's not a smallpox blanket statement. <laughs> I think that's a different type of Indian that that happened to. <laughs> so, a for effort, though. A for effort. So, Jay, uh, you go to USC? Yes, sir. How long have you been going there again? I graduated from undergrad there, and now I'm in dental school there. Yeah? What's your love life like? You using that little dick for anything good? Uh, this is my love life right now. Really? Uh. He's wow. pointing to his butt for the audio <laughs> listeners. <laughs> so, when's the There's the red band I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, like uh, the last date you went on, when was that? Uh, two, two weeks ago. <laughs> Say that again? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Where'd you meet the girl? Uh, Bumble. Bumble. Yeah. Yeah. And what does your Bumble profile say? Dentist? It does say dentist. You fucking liar. You it lie to everybody, dentist. man. Totally a dentist, and then somebody gets a fucking like, oh, I think my tooth hurt. You're like, oh, shit, I got to call my doctor. You don't know anything. I, I know things. Really? Go ahead, ask me. Okay. So, uh, what is this, Slumdog Millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now you're learning. So, Jay, where'd you take her on that date? I took it to a bar in Santa Monica. Yeah, what bar? Bar Chloe. It's like a lounge. And uh, lounge. what'd you order? What'd she order? I got rum and coke, and I forgot what she got. She forgot what she got, too. <laughs> <laughs> plop, plop. Fizz, fizz. Wow. <laughs> she did it, I did I. <laughs> That's my leprechaun, Jeremiah Watkins O'Shanahan. <laughs> so, uh, you had, well, how many drinks do you think you had? Uh, about three or four. Yeah, and then which, which, what happened? Then you're like, hey, what do you say we take this back to uh, my office? I mean my uh, studio apartment. Yeah, we actually went back to my place. Did you curry her home? I did. <laughs> I'm not proud of any of it. <laughs> so you say, what do you say we go back to my... Ooh, what, wait, let me ask you this. What ethnicity is she? She's white. Whoa! Okay, so <laughs> you're on in this day with a white girl. She has three or four drinks as well, or you're just getting drunk? No, she has three or four drinks as well. Okay, and you're like, what do you say we go back to my place? And she says... She said, yeah. Okay, and then what happens? And then we did the deed, because that's... <laughs> <laughs> I asked you not to fucking say that, man. <laughs> that's why I did it. That's why I did it. Now, you seem like the kind of guy that would wear two condoms. 
Uh, how close am I to right on that? I got, you got, I have you got a... some set of brown balls, my friend. Yeah. Why do you but... go out to hurt people? Why are you going to be such a prick? Look at him. Fucking just a ball of anger. When learn, you... learn about comedy from these guys with their bogus fucking Irish accents. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the top of the date here, though. <laughs> Father? So, did you notice anything in particular that stood out to you about this girl, about this specific hookup a couple weeks ago that was different than any girl that you've been with? Was a little something weird or off or anything like that? No, they're all no. just the same? No, I didn't notice anything different. I can't you just think of did it. the deed and then what did you do? Did you go, oh, I'll get you an Uber or something like that? Uh, no, she got an Uber herself. <laughs> Yeah, she had to get out of there pretty quick, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, she did. Yeah. That's when you know the guy spends. Get your own fucking Uber. Yeah. Yeah, what'd you think? I'm a dentist or something? I'm a fucking freshman. Yeah, I'm in school. You know the drill. Get out of here. Yeah! And that that's a, takes a lot of wisdom to have a girl get her own uh, Uber. Hey, well, I got a question. When you fist girls, do you call it the poon jab? <laughs> I do now. Fuck yeah. Did you take her to eat anywhere? Or you guys just went straight to the bar. Did you take her to like a new deli or anything like that that you know of? All right, this is getting silly. Anything else for Jay Dom before I send No, I, th I, I definitely think he has the potential to be uh, a, pu a public speaker. <laughs> no, no, but, no, I mean, he's likable. I, I like him. I want to see him, you know, next time you have some real, uh, you know, just tighter material. And I know it's, it's tough for a minute, but he definitely shows stage presence, don't you think? Yeah. 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 You yeah. can't help but like the fucking retard. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Jay Sings. Hey, first time on uh, Kill Tony. He's on Twitter at Dr. J Comedy. I'm, I'm pretty sure he just touched me on his way off. Super weird. I don't like it when people touch me like that. <laughs> All right, I pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Danny Archella. I'm not seeing movement, so we're going to move on. Blacklisted. Yeah, can't miss your spot. Put your hands together for Terrence Murphy. Here we go from deep in the corner. One long stride. Here he comes. Hell yeah. Put your hands together for Terrence Murphy, everyone. Hold on, guys. Excited to be here, man. Uh, I don't know if you could tell how excited I am, but uh, my son said his first cuss word. Um, most, most parents get excited about what? Babies' first steps or sending their kid off to college. But uh, now I'm trying to write jokes. You know, I got to uh, tear it up, you know? Is is nigga a cuss word, nigga? I mean, not for me, but I'm I'm asking a few white people that are here, right? It's top five words you can't teach your kids. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm so curious. I'm always curious the conversation white people have to have with their kids about that word. You know, like uh, mommy is just a word, Becca. <laughs> you could say shit, not this. You know. Like I uh and my girl my girl's uh Hispanic, right? And uh she uh she grew up in like a rough part of LA, so she say nigga more than I do. Uh <laughs> so it wasn't the, it wasn't even the fact that he said it, it was that he used it the right way, you know? Like uh like how do you say nigga? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my time. Terrence Murphy guys. Terrence Murphy. Hell yeah, Terrence. Have you been on the show before? Nah, first time. Man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank How long have you been on stand-up? Uh, it's my third year now, going to third year. So. All here in Los Angeles? Uh, Yeah, yep. all in L.A., man. Is this where you're from? No, I'm originally from uh, Gary, Indiana. Oh, cool. We're going to be in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. I saw, I saw you a, talk uh, shit about uh, Fort Wayne. Uh, where? I heard the little pin drop or whatever it was you guys did for Fort Wayne. Pin drop. It was, you did no, some it, sort what of. What sound effect did you hit? You did well, a, obviously it was a gunshot. But no, it, it, that was a, that, that was, was Detroit. Detroit. That was, there was a Boeing. It was more of a Boeing. 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 Yeah. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yeah. yeah. 
And you're from what, Gary? Gary, Indiana. That's a, there's Gary, a Indiana. couple, I think, really big comedians from there, right? I'm from Steve, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Terrence, what do you do for a living? Uh, actually, I'm a stay-at-home dad right now. Really? Yeah. How old's your kid? Uh, one, just turned one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a daughter, huh? Yeah. No, a boy. I got a little boy. Oh, okay. I was just going off of uh, the I, joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you, because do you say a daughter in it? Say, no, I oh. say a son. Oh, okay. I think I say son. Don't I say son? I hope I say son. Yeah, you, say. <laughs> well, you had really good stage presence. Thank that you. was your. That was the main thing I noticed. Was you came on and you immediately took command and you had a good stage presence. And then as far as the set, I have to admit I wasn't really listening. I tried. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. <laughs> you I said it to everybody. Um, uh, you know, maybe I'm old school, but I just never would say nigger or cunt on stage. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> Call me old school, you know. <laughs> There's no place for that, you know. Oh, shoot. Offend the great, that's good. <laughs> Fuck, take take away from like, it. Like if you said, like, she's a nigger cunt, that's really <laughs> way out there. It's too much for me. Yeah, you definitely can't say that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't <laughs> say it. Or doing the deed. <laughs> well, <I should> right. <laughs> there's just <laughs> there's some things you just can't say. Yeah. And uh, there's some things money really can't buy. <laughs> uh, Terrence, so you've been doing it for three years. Uh, you're a stay-at-home dad. How are you making yeah. money? Uh, so we do like an Airbnb, and my girl, she's kind of paying the bills right now. You know. So uh, what does she do? She uh, works for an airline. Oh, yeah? What airline? Uh, Southwest. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Big trouble. Um, you know, like Southwest? What's wrong with Southwest? Nah, it's too... It's is, too is she one of those funny stewardess? She, she tries to be. Yeah, what, yeah. yeah. Does she have any jokes that she does, you know? All stolen from me, yeah. Well, yeah, what are they? Any, uh, you, what's your favorite? That you wait, you're responsible for that comedy on Southwest <laughs> Airlines? <laughs> you May you burn in hell for eternity. <laughs> Any good ones that you remember giving her? Uh, not that I can, not off the top of my head that I can think of. Um, uh, Hi, I've got an asshole who's trying to tell <laughs> the stewardess <laughs> a jokes. Can you get him off the plane, please? <laughs> uh, well, that's good. Um, so what else do you do for fun or like hobbies or anything? Anything that you do to get away from the... Uh, this, this, one year this old. man trying to trying to make it. Trying when you're to not doing comedy and you're not with the one year old. Is there anything that you go off and do or that you're into? I mean, we travel a lot, you know, with her. Man, and boy, uh, are his arms tired. <laughs> why, 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 why would his arms be tired? Because flying. Because oh. stewardess. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, sometimes you wait play too that, long play to that drop car a joke cringe. And this happens. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Back to you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you for the toss. That's our man down on the scene, uh, Joel Jimenez. Uh, all right, Terrence. Well, I mean, what else? Is there anything else in your life? What's the one-year-old like? Does he, uh, do, does he do anything that is annoying to you? Uh, man, it, he's, uh, I mean, other than cuss more than I do. Uh, really? Does yeah, he? he's nigga. Really? Uh, one yeah. years old? I, but I, I can't keep offending Dom. That's I'm going to stop. <laughs> You don't need to do that. You're bigger than that. You're better than that. I mean, you know. Are there, are you, do you think I'm fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Does the one-year-old really swear? Yeah. I, I, Where do you I, think he gets it from? It's all, it's all me. I, I cuss around the house. I, you, you can't. I don't but wanna... if it's just you and the one-year-old, what are you cussing about? <laughs> Why am I here alone with my one-year-old? That's a good question. <laughs> there was no cuss words in that. It's, it's probably mostly when his mom gets home is when I do the cuss. <laughs> the idea that he was... Anyway, thanks, I, I, thanks for the support, Tony <laughs> It'd be why am I here with this fucking one-year-old? <laughs> his, his last name is Murphy, but I've never seen his kin around Ireland before. <laughs> how, many, how many times a day do you say the N-word? Ooh, that's a I mean, you said this like what seven times during this set? No, no, I did. I? Your kids saying it? Yeah. I mean, is it like a hundred times a day? You're probably saying it. You're one of those guys. No, no, no. Just it's just for the it's just for the joke. And you know, I'm trying to get. I would. I did. I should have planned that out a little bit better. I was trying to get him to say it, but he didn't. He he. You're trying he, to get you, other people. I, th I think what Red, I think what Red Band's asking is, you know, you, we probably heard the N word maybe. Uh, you know, I don't know what. 
25 times since you've been up here. Oh, really? So I guess our question is, is like, what's your NPH? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. what is like the, <laughs> if you had to guess, like, over... 20 a minute, 20 a minute, right? 20 minutes? 28 minutes. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought only I said it that often. Yeah. <laughs> Can you what? just tone it down a little and just say, you know, like, faggot, stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll switch it to that. <laughs> oh. All right, Terrence. Well, what scares you? What are you afraid of? Ooh, oh, man, interesting questions here. Um, Please don't say water. Please don't say water. <laughs> Please don't say. You're back. Biggest, biggest fear. <laughs> that's that. <laughs> the man, that's the song in my heart right there. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Terrence, it was good to meet you. All right, guys. Fun times. Thanks, thanks so Terrence much, guys. Murphy. Fun fun times. He's on Twitter at First Sparrow. There he goes. He touched me too. We're two for two for touches tonight. I guess it's just going to be a whole new run and fucking gag, isn't it, everybody? So it's good. Oh, welcome to another episode of fucking Touch Tony. Little Celebrating our five-year anniversary. Just feel, don't, it's like, feel like the tree stump at the Apollo. Everybody's just rubbing me for good luck on their way off for some... Oh, thanks, Josh. <laughs> The worst one. In, in in their defense, they just want to make sure you've become a real boy. All right, there you, you son of a bitch. Josh like Martin how... touched me. He's gonna be with me in uh, Seattle. I forgot to mention I'm doing Seattle, and uh, actually that's this weekend. We're gonna be together in Austin, Texas. Yes. Just a date. Well, well, yeah. Oh, you and Josh Martin. Taking him for a, for a big, I can't talk. Taking him for a vacation. Spa day. Dom, Dom Irera is also going to be at the Laugh Factory the first weekend of April in Rochester, New York. No, DomIrera.com for tickets. Yep. Las Laugh Factory Vegas. in Las Vegas the first weekend of April. Rochester and also, is another club. And then, yeah, uh, Rochester, New York. I-R-R-E-R-A. I'll be in I'll actually be in Ireland, boys. Real Ireland. Hey, my mom's always criticizing my teeth. I said at least mine aren't on my pussy. Fuck yeah. Uh, you guys ready to go back to the bucket, huh? You guys having fun out there? All right, I pulled another name out. This looks like an interesting one. Put your hands together for Sal Frataloni. He's got a steady jog. Here he comes. Sal Frataloni. How's it going, everybody? Do you guys like clickbait? You guys know what clickbait is? It's these, it's fake news stories on like Facebook and Twitter. I saw some clickbait the other day that, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously going to share it with you because it's my set. So this is some clickbait I saw the other day. It said, bride-to-be leaves empty seat for her dead son at her wedding. Can't hold back tears when she sees who shows up. Who showed up? Was it her dead son? Did her dead son just go and crawl out of the grave and go to his mother's wedding? Also, if your kid dies like two weeks before your wedding, I don't know, maybe don't have a wedding. Maybe have a funeral for your dead son. Oh, but we already got the ice sculpture. No, how about a casket? You need a casket and an urn based off his preferences. I don't know. Anyway. I ended early. Oh, shit. Fuck yeah. Sal Fratelloni. Hi, Sal. How's it going? This is your first time on the show, right? It is my first time on the show. Okay. Yeah, I, don't know uh, I, I like how you always repeat back the answer and the question. <laughs> Good for documentaries. How old are you, Sal? I'm 21. Yeah, you seem like it. You seem like you have a little baby head on you, huh? <laughs> Oh, that baby laugh too. Adorable. <laughs> wow. Twenty one. What so uh what uh what's your life story? Uh, oh, something about you, Sal. I started doing improv uh in like seventh grade and then stand up I started that when I was like It was like four years ago, yeah, Sal. Four years ago, uh, yeah. Uh I started doing stand up like when I was like nineteen, I think. And then started getting more serious like when I turned twenty. But yeah. Jesus, uh, you make it sound like those are different numbers, Sal. Like, I started when I was 19, really started picking up when I was 20, and uh, now I'm 21, so uh, here I am. Like, really, 
Is it getting serious with her? It, I'm sorry? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, are you from California? I'm not. I'm from Minnesota. Okay. Uh, Sal, <laughs> Sal, over here. Yes. Um, I'd like to hear another one of your bits. I mean, not really, but... <laughs> uh, uh, because because you did you did uh, like uh, sort of a sort of a, 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 a not a cardinal sin but an error in comedy where you uh, you talked about something that was funnier than you and you literally read like a funny article and then you were like hey so this is a funny article right <laughs> and then it sounded like some of the stuff you said was funny after that so I'd like to hear another bit but you have you have to uh, that's like something like where you draw your material from. Just in general, that, that bit is, uh, violates a, a rule of comedy. I'd like to in know my head, there's no rules to comedy. There's not a single rule to comedy. I'm trying to figure out this fucking accent. Do you understand really what I'm saying, though, Bio? I was interested in the choice of material for just a minute. And especially when you're talking about children dying. And so, you know, it's like, if you're going to do something like that, it really better be over the top fucking funny. Yeah. Because is there anything more depressing? What, were you, what, did, what lost to that? What did you go, well, I'm not fucking doing this. <laughs> I, I just saw it on, uh, I Kick, literally saw it on Facebook. Kicking Facebook. puppy material. <laughs> <laughs> took, a, took a back seat tonight. So, Sal, tell us about, like, you. You're 21. What are you doing with your life? Uh, you, I, you, how do you make money? I uh, I was a bar back in Minnesota for a little Aye. bit. And, uh, so <laughs> You're also a Roseanne's son-in-law on the show <laughs> Roseanne. <laughs> you dated Darlene, right? Yes, I was. What do you mean you were a bar back? Is this one of those, well, back when I was 19, uh, <laughs> you know. And then next thing you know, I'm 20, I'm, I'm beat up, can't, I'm not, no longer in the game. <laughs> uh, what do you mean you were once a bar back? Uh, I, my cousin got me the job at this bar downtown. It's called The Loon, downtown Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked the Super Bowl, and I made a 1000 bucks in three days. So I was just like, fuck it, I'm coming to L.A. I've always wanted to do <laughs> wow, it. Wow, fuck oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're saying bareback with an Irish accent. I get it, you're a barback. <laughs> <laughs> So you got the thousand bucks. How long ago did you move to LA? Uh, two weeks ago. So that's, Fucking awesome. So Thank you. That pretty much burnt the thousand bucks already, right? I am broke right yeah. now. I'm so now broke. what are you going to do? What's your plan? Uh, just hit up Mike's. I just, I don't know. What's just, your living situation? I stayed with my cousin for a week and then uh, met some dude from Mutual Friends and then stayed with him for another week and now I'm back with my cousin. This, uh, this dude that you met... Uh, <laughs> Like, uh, how, why does he let you uh, sleep at his place? I blow him every day. Right. I can't believe you walked into that. Wow, I, I, I can really tell that you started improv in seventh grade, Sal. Uh, but in, in real life, the real answer of the question... He just yes-handed his dick off. <laughs> I, uh... Uh, I met him through a mutual friend, and he's an assistant to an agency out here, an uh, agency called APA. So. <laughs> an agency oh. called APA. <laughs> Fuck yeah, one of the biggest agencies in the world. You yeah. definitely moved here two weeks ago. Very good. <laughs> this wow. thing called, I, I, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, uh, show business? Uh, I don't know. Good job, Sal. You're learning. So you're living on the couch of an assistant to an agent at APA. And, yeah. But my question is, like, why is he, are you paying him? Uh, I paid him 50 bucks. I just stayed there for a week, and I'm back with my cousin for one more week. But I move into a new place on April 1st. Well, how'd you pay for that? Wait, are you sure you're moving into a new place? Or is the <laughs> landlord just April Foolsing you? <laughs> April 1st, I'm moving into this mansion in the hills. You know what I mean? Everything's, it's free. Everything's taken care of. It I found it on Craigslist. Fucking awesome. April 1st, for sure. He said it, that's the only day it's available. <laughs> All right. Well, Sal, that's fucking interesting. I yeah. mean, where's that place at? You're just it, living it, with... It is in Beverly Hills. like you. Wow. Yeah. April 1st, you're moving to Beverly Hills. Yeah, with another buddy from college, but we're sharing a room. And that college was in Minnesota. Yeah, it's uh, southern Minnesota. It's called Mankato State University. What's the largest culture shock that uh, you've had since being here in L.A.? What's like something that you find? I'll give you an example. When I first moved here, uh, I could not believe how many homeless people I saw you know eating stuff right out of yeah. trash cans and now it's been I think 12 or 13 years and I'm so desensitized that the other night 
I saw a homeless guy get ready to go out that night. <laughs> and, and, it, and it didn't even really even affect me. Like, I was like, I walk by One Direction, and he asked for spare change. You walked by the band One Direction? Yeah. And then I walked back the other way after going to the store or whatever, and he literally, like, is, you know, all dressed up and washed up and everything. Suavamente! Wow, it's just... <laughs> Say whatever you think from these fucking leprechauns over here. It's just fucking shoot around day at uh, Kill Town. And it's Mr. Negative Nancy Tony Hitchcock <laughs> over there in the corner. Shut it and I shut it I. All right. What I to tie are. And if things don't go on my way, I'm going to cripple every day. And we'll keep on moving along with it. Let's do that. Yep. You kind of turned into a leprechaun there for a second. You're a good actor. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right. So. Sal, there's so much that I want to talk with you about because you seem like such like a precious little L.A. virgin. Well, let him know? answer your question. What, was there something that you saw that, that you were like, whoa, that doesn't happen in Minnesota? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, did you turn into Eric Hartman halfway <laughs> through yeah. it? I, uh, I, don't know, I saw a homeless dude uh, nice. uh, shit on the f like sidewalk, just take a shit. Yeah, that happens He just a lot. pulled up his pants and left. Um, that was pretty crazy. Going to dispensaries is honestly nuts because weed is super illegal in Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I went to this dispensary called OG Express, uh -huh. and I didn't realize till I was like pulling onto Crenshaw Boulevard. Eek. Yeah, that it's like literally I was 400 feet away from Compton, like the other side of the highway was you, Compton. You didn't hear Crenshaw Boulevard, <laughs> like I was like, oh, it's that Biggie Small. Yeah, I didn't even know where it was, and then. I, for some reason, I don't believe that you really have ever listened to Biggie Smalls. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like you're just using that as some pop culture reference that you think. Yeah, like Biggie Smalls, who, by the way, was a New York rapper. <laughs> yeah. You fucking... Oh, yeah, this reminds me of the old uh, Biggie Smalls. And, uh, and I remember the time I was in New York City, and I'm like, man, the land of Tupac. Wow. Jeez, uh, Louise, I sure do love applying my hip-hop knowledge to geography. <laughs> <laughs> Those East Coast West Coast wars sure were crazy. Am I right? What what is what is some of your favorite bands besides Nickelback? What is some of your favorite? Come on, he's into hip hop, man. He's into fucking you know. I like a rap group called Brain and the Brawny Man. <laughs> like, oh my god! <laughs> Wearing flannel. The Brawny Man wears he, flannel. He looks more like a Children of the Corn to me. <laughs> Oh God! Can we get worse than anybody else? Can we get more volume on the band's microphones, please? <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> like, what's your favorite band right now? Right now? Uh, <laughs> fuck! I don't. I don't really listen to bands. Christian rock. Is, uh, Christian band, rock. Right? I like Go Fish. No, I don't know. Um, I uh, there's this band in Minnesota called Remo Drive that's really good that I like a lot. Shout out to Remo Drive if you're out there listening. This guy fucking loves you. <laughs> Dom, what do you think of Sal Fratelloni? Does he remind you of any of the guys that you met back in your days growing up that or named Sal Fratelloni? Does he well, seem the like name, a name? But his his attitude, the whole thing. It's, yeah. it's totally Midwestern. Yeah. So he doesn't. He's not really like real Italian. Right. He's like fake kind of. Yeah. It's like white. I don't boy. mean like you're a phony, but it's just not real, you know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Olive Garden loving son of a bitch. <laughs> oh. Thank you. All right, Sal. Well, it was nice to meet you. Anything else you want to say? Anything else that you want to share with this audience? The real life thoughts of a 21 year old? I, ju I just, I made friends with the dentist just before the show started. Fuck so. yeah, I'll tell yeah. you this. When I was 21 and broke as fuck and in LA <laughs> trying to be a comedian, I wish I was friends with a dentist back then. So you're doing it right, buddy. Thank Can you. I ask one, one question? Yes. yes. Question, wait, question I coming a, from the great and powerful Dom Iero. I am a real Italian, by the way. I have my no, Italian I, I'm, horn you know, on Oh, he's got the horn. Very good. Hell yeah. I'm surprised you still I'm, I'm surprised you still have that after going to a dispensary on Crenshaw <laughs> Boulevard. <laughs> Yes, your question, Dom I just want to ask you, is there any kind of like terror inside of you about the idea of not having money and being in, in such a big, tough city? Is that, I mean, uh, 20, you're 21, you're broke, you're obviously just starting stand-up or start, start whatever the fuck you were doing here. But, <laughs> no, but I, mean, <laughs> I say that with all due respect, but yeah. the fact, don't you have like anxiety over this? Oh, I'm, ter I'm fucking oh, okay. terrified. That makes yeah, me feel, of course. Yeah. Cause you seem like, oh yeah, I got no, I got yeah, it's... this is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, money, I don't... I don't have money. Food, fuck food. <laughs> uh, 
I, but I saw a man take a shit right on the pavement. I think I'll write, I think I'll write that down. <laughs> yeah. You, I, that's all I want Don to has tapped into something pretty interesting, and I guess the tidbit of advice that I'll throw in for a little special treat for you is like, don't let that improv that you started in seventh grade, you know, when you're doing stand up, try to do stand up. Yeah. And, you know, really fucking like, because the vulnerability that a guy like you can show instead of just being, well, you know, fucking. Yeah. It, it, it goes a long way. Of course, yeah. There you that's go, Sal Fratelloni. Thank you. Of course. Of course he knows that. He's 21. Why, why take the advice of one of the top young rising comedians in the world? Just of course it. Piece of shit. A spoiled brat. Nobody, nobody's been nervous tonight. It's very unusual. They're, they're all kind of calm. And they, they? Oh yeah. Everybody's you know they're 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 not I've sweating. I've been here so many times where people are like yeah just jumping around with anxiety. Yeah. All these guys the, you know even if they're not funny they're. The they're dentist nice. was even comfortable during his interview and he bombed. He was way too comfortable. Yeah, you remember that brownie joke I did five minutes ago? <laughs> no, uh, no. Oh, we good. Okay, cool. Forget it. All right, never mind. Just checking. I pulled what appears to be another new name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for James Bida. 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 James Bita, he's coming from the farthest corner of the room. He made his way here. James Bita, ladies and gentlemen. All right, thank you. Um, so yeah, my name's James Bita. I'm from Boston. Don't have an accent. I also never worn a wife beater, so I've never had to hear someone say James Bita in a wife beater, because that would be terrible. Um, I, uh, I work at a coffee shop. Uh, I would not recommend working at a coffee shop. It's a pretty terrible place to work. Um, it's unnatural to be forced to be kind to over 200 people a day. After five years, it affects my speech. I used to say, have a nice day. Now I say, have a nice slip onto some train tracks, you fucking asshole. I don't want to see you tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think the cucumber of all the vegetables is the biggest pussy when it comes to freezing in my mini fridge. <laughs> That's my time. Thank you. Wow. Bita, Bita, how do I say that? Bita. Bita. James Bita, you have all the charisma of a young Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> I mean, wow. This is incredible. Where have they kept you locked up at all these years? You seem like one of those people that have been trapped inside of a place, like tied down, bolted down windows, and you just got out. You're like, first thing I'm going to do, stand-up comedy at the comedy store. Kill Tony, Monday night. They're like, we think you need to recoup for a bit. You're like, I got this shit. Yeah, pretty much. How, how long have you been a rock climbing instructor? Uh, two days. How long have you been exclusively eating treadle mix? <laughs> Yeah. How long have you been my son? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, All right. take a look at him and then tell me if that joke was bad. What, has he got a fucking Did orange beard on? Thank you. I am, I am Latino, so... All right, James I, I love the way you held... Uh, I, Dom? I, I love the way you held for the laugh, even though there was no laugh. But it was, it was great to see that timing, you know. You say something, well, yeah, I, I, I started out in Minneapolis, whatever, and, and, and my father was a butcher. And just like, <laughs> there was no joke or nothing. But you, st but you, and then you the, acted as if you were banging joke after joke out. And, and let's not forget that you also said, you know, I'm James Beta, and I've never worn a wife beater, or else I'd have to say, I'm James Beta and a wife beater. And that would be terrible. And you're right, that would be terrible if you said it. And you said it right before you said it. So just, just so said, everyone knows how terrible it is. So that's what they always say. I know a lot of my mentors coming up always said, open with your worst joke. That's what they always said. And uh, Well, your closer, the cucumber, what the fuck was that about? <laughs> <laughs> I, that made zero sense at all. I didn't. Oh, because... Uh, 
Well, just because I have a mini fridge and I put vegetables in it, and then cucumbers just I didn't even so hear easily. That. I didn't even hear that joke. I was too busy writing down young Edward Scissorhands <laughs> on a piece of paper. Wait, so it, it's the only one that doesn't freeze? Oh, it freezes too easily. and then Because it, it's it mostly will... water and it's, you know. Right. Yeah. What? Ah. Yeah. So and then it's all have... mushy and it's a piece of shit vegetable. Uh, James, what, uh, what uh, vampire uh, <laughs> do you go to to get your hair cut? <laughs> Doctor, because I mean that looks like a fucking that looks like a vampire haircut if I've ever seen. It. I haven't. Do you cut sit it. under one of those like blow sit down like things that go no. over your head? You Use tin foil or something like that. Towel dry. You need conditioner. Wow. What kind of towel? Like a uh, a beach towel. Oh, all right. Uh, you don't know. You know you don't have to refrigerate cucumbers. They come from outside. Brian's yeah. stuck on the cucumber <laughs> thing. Uh, he really will not give up on it. James, James, J James. Yes, yes, it is James. From the bottom of my heart, I think if you want to be a comedian, I think you should go for it. Thank, thank I think you. that there's something funny about you. Yeah. Absolutely. And appreciate That's it. it. Thank you, man. I agree. A little bit of. Don't encourage the cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> James, how old are you? Uh, 26. 26. How long have you been doing stand up? This is my first night. First time ever doing stand up. There he is. Wow, how about that? The sheep. The Maybe he is sheep. born with it. <laughs> Maybe it's Maybelline. So James, this is your first time doing it. How long have you wanted to try stand-up? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks. What happened two weeks ago? Oh, that's a um, good, that's an honest answer. Uh, I was at work and I, the thought popped into my head. Um, On top of a cliff? <laughs> I, I thought... What do you do for work? He's I, a professional hang glider. No, well, what? I work at Dunkin' Donuts. Wow! <laughs> Fuck yeah, I love that. How long have you been working for Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, I worked for them one year in 2011 back in Boston. Now I'm working like two years here. Now Dunkin' Donuts, yes. Jeremiah. You ever have sex with a girl and you're like, I'm gonna glaze all over those tits of yours. <laughs> and then I'm gonna sprinkle you with my poop. Oh, okay, got a little creepy there at the end. <laughs> all right. So James, you've been at the Dunkin' Donuts. And then I'm gonna bear claw you. <laughs> and then you're gonna, I'm gonna come inside your La Boston cream pie. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Shoot all. And that. then I'm gonna wear some long johns because I got cold in here. Wait, why would there be a long johns there? Because it's a time of donut oh, long johns. Wow, that's exclusively. Uh, all right, I've never even heard of that long john. It's the weirdest donut. Really? It, what is a long john? Can you? It's just a long donut, and yeah. it's charged more, even though it's the same amount of dough and everything. Wow. I, I just think it's a weird name. Why would you name a donut a long john? Boy. Uh, there's, a, there's a premise. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Run with it, baby. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. James, what is, your, uh, what is your least favorite thing about working with Dunkin' Donuts? Um... No, like I said, being forced to be kind. Like sometimes you're just not having a good day and you have to see over 300 people and everyone's half asleep and all they want is their coffee and uh, yeah. they're just assholes. Yeah. And no one listens to you. You talk and they're just what, like... What did you say? <laughs> 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 Sorry. I was I kind of nodding off. But, uh, How long ago did you move to Los Angeles? Uh, September 2014. Wow. September 2014. Good luck, man. Maybe someday, Starbucks. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. You never know. They got good health insurance, I hear. <laughs> what, uh, what kind of Latino are you? Uh, Brazilian. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> that, I thought you girls were supposed to be prettier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <laughs> James, what else do you do? What have you been doing for fun? Like, what do you do? You have a group of buddies that you hang out with out here? Like, uh, what do you do? No, yeah, I met some people out here. We just hang out, smoke weed. I met some comics last week. I signed up. Uh, we've been shooting shorts. We're just hanging out. I got to share an Uber with Aphrodite. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what you call it. Uber XXL and black. You know what I'm saying? At the same damn time. That is a special Uber. Did, Five did, stars indeed. Did you get any of that ass? Huh? Oh. 
Jesus. Can I tell you something, by the way? I looked up fucking, I googled Aphrodite just at some point over the week. I was stoned and I was just looking shit up, random shit up. I got off on a tangent. And I found some very fucking serious, po first thing that pops up, you type out Aphrodite and spell it Afro, A-F-R-O. Uh, unbelievably high quality music videos and amazing pieces of work that you've done, Aphrodite. It mm -hmm. was very awesome. It was very entertaining. Yeah. So make sure you check that out. It's all over. It's all out there. Go Google Aphrodite. I can't even believe it's like, it's you. It's a... Because I know the comedian, but the musician, even though we've had you sing on here and stuff, I mean, fucking awesome. She's a poet also. She is a badass bitch. One more time for Aphrodite. <laughs> James, uh, what's your love life like? You seem like you're a pretty, uh, I can't tell whether you're like sensitive and soft in bed or you like spit in their mouth to just get things started, you know what I mean? Because um, it seems like it sort of goes either way with you. I could picture a little bit of both. Yeah, no, for me, once we're Like, in the maybe bedroom, you spit in their mouth, and then you apologize immediately yeah. afterwards. That's what I'm... That's the vibe I'm sorting. Yeah. I would definitely apologize. It'd be an accident. Is that it? <laughs> to spit in someone's mouth? He looks like a... He, he looks like a professional pumpkin carver. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Isn't it funny that we could do this show for years and years and always still have new things just by the look of a human being? Like, you really bring it out in us. I've never thought of it. Well, Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm Brazilian, and I'll spit on you. <laughs> there you go. Are you a gentle lover? I'll drink to that. Um, well, I think once you're in the bedroom, anything goes. Oh, wow! Like, like choking, slapping. Holy shit! Hammers, that guns. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean anything goes? What's the wildest thing you've ever done to a girl? Come on, just no. be honest. First thing that pops in your head, go. Stake uh, through the heart. No, choking. <laughs> choking. <laughs> Gave her that Boston one, two. <laughs> Stab through the heart. Jesus. Come on, James. Tell us the truth. Come on. No, choking, I think, was the weirdest. Choking? Why, why was... Wait, the weirdest? Yeah, I just wasn't used to it at the time. Right, at the time. Now I noticed... Swallowing dicks? <laughs> at the time being the keywords there. Uh, now, if you just break the plane of his bedroom, he has both hands around your neck just on top. You fucking bitch! I told you don't let him give me in the bedroom! Well, was it I in a car uh, garage or a bush? Or, like, or was it in your bedroom? What's... What? Nothing. Wow. No. Literally called his own nothing on that she, one afterwards. Uh, what was that, nothing? Um, it's too hard to explain. James, you seem like you are like the youngest Menendez brother or something like that. Have you ever thought about killing your parents? Nah. Do you hate your parents? By the No. No, you love them? Um, there's a little bit of resentment, but not really. For what? Why? Your dad? Uh, just because they're He wasn't very, around uh, when you were a kid. Well, they're very, like, conservative, um, small-minded people, I guess. Ooh, small-minded. I you had they're, me a conservative. Now it seems like you're the dick, buddy. Well, small-minded. But, you know, you know, they're sort of a tiny brain. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, what's Jesus. wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, in what way? Like, what, what, what way do you think they're most conservative? Did they use some of the words that uh, Dom said should never be used no, <laughs> earlier? Never. never. No? What's no. so conservative about them? Like, they think stand-up comedy is from the devil. Really? Yeah. Random, wow. Random Sick, dude. Jeez. That sounds small-minded to me. Right. Yeah. So they saw Tony Hinchcliffe's Netflix special. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> So true. That is the devil's work. Uh, is there like a what is the version of the N word in Brazil? Oh, this is a good one. Uh, it's a chupi chupi de asfalto. Say that again. Chupi chupi de asfalto. Well, look at a black guy when you say it. Come on, I want to hear it. I want to hear it come from the heart. You know what I mean? Uh, what it what it means is a chupi chupi is like a lollipop, and lollipops run, and asfalto is asphalt. So it's like the runoff of asphalt. It's like the worst thing. Like ever. gutter juice. I guess. Right. Oh, I liked it it's, before I knew what it meant. It's bad, yeah. It's a so bad James, thing. this well, was your first time ever on stage. How do you feel? You think you're going to do it again? You think it's something that you really want to do? Uh, yeah, for sure. I'm very, like, adrenaline's pumping. And, yeah. But I feel good. Well, yeah. I got, I got to, I, a note for you. Yes. When, you, when, you get, when you finish, uh, you should go, like, listen to this appearance and write down every word. Just and just see what you get. See if you get any comedy from it. For sure. Right away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that you was know. so inspirational. <laughs> yeah. I feel like doing stand up now. I mean, look, James, you're very promising. That was your first time ever on stage. It took Chris D'Elia like two or three years to have that exact haircut. 
<laughs> All right, there he goes, James Beta. His first time on the show. He's on Instagram at James R. Beta. B I D A. Back to the bucket we go, where it stops, nobody knows. How about uh, Josh Kreps? Josh Kreps? I heard an oh shit. That usually means that they're here and they got so stoned that they forgot that they signed up. Josh Kreps. Here he comes. What's going on, everybody? You guys like competition food shows? Anybody? I used to love them until I realized they were prejudiced against poor people. It's true. Whenever they open their baskets, the ingredients are always for rich people. It's like open your baskets, you'll find black garlic and frog gua and chickpeas. You guys got that shit in your fridge? Me neither. I wish they'd do one episode for poor people. It's like open your baskets, you'll find batteries. <laughs> And baking soda and ketchup. Now make some shit. You know? But I wanted to cook along with them real bad, so I went on this website called whatsinyourfridge.com. And on what's in your fridge, you can type in everything you have in your fridge, and it tells you what you can make. So I took like eight hours putting everything in my fridge. I'm a slow typer. And I, thought you, <laughs> I thought you had to put the pans in. You don't, just the food. Uh, but, all right. Josh Krebs, very fun. I like that. Very funny. That was funny. How's it going? This is your first time on the show, right? Yeah, man. How, how long have you been on stand-up? A year. A year. All here in Los Angeles? Um, San Diego. Started in San Diego. You still live in San Diego? Yeah. You're just visiting here tonight? Yeah. Mm hmm You go back tomorrow? Uh, tonight. Wow. What, uh, what docks do you work at? <laughs> Don't make fun of me, son, like that. <laughs> I was waiting yeah. for that. It's good for, the, uh, it's good for these Irishmen <laughs> to see what a beard looks like. <laughs> hey, don't insult our beards. I got this off of my wife's nipples. You guys wore, you guys, pretty sure you guys wore the same thing during the Thanksgiving season when you were turkeys on top of your heads. Maybe, I don't know. It's New, fresh beards, Tony. Po po podcast listeners just picture it. Um... <laughs> So Josh, let's talk about it. You've been doing stand-up for a year. Mm -hmm. Life's good. You perform in San Diego a lot. Yeah, I just won a contest in LA. Yeah, what the, contest? The U.S. Comedy Contest. U.S. Comedy Contest. What was that the Ice House? Oh, very cool. I once, uh, uh, when I was a year, <laughs> I once tried to do that, and I w got second place, and the second place won a side of French fries. <laughs> I did that also. <laughs> I got the burger. <laughs> you got the burger? Yeah, first place. Fucking awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Congratulations. What uh, what do you do for work? I'm a bartender. Oh, yeah. That's oh, cool. That <laughs> that right. How long have you been doing that he for? Uh, like six years. You drink? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm drunk as fuck right now. Any any cool uh, <laughs> any cool uh, drunken stories from your life? Like craziest oh, thing you ever did being <laughs> uh, drunk? Uh, craziest thing I ever did was uh, ride on a motorcycle three deep with a schizophrenic guy. In North Carolina. Three guys on one motorcycle with two six at one packs. time. We were each holding two six-packs. What time of the night was this? It was like 3.30 in the morning. Oh, my God. Yeah. Was the schizophrenic guy the one that had the handlebars? He was the one who had the bike. He said that he was running for president. <laughs> wow. So I was immediately interested. Holy privilege. I, th I, think, he, I <laughs> think he won. He did. <laughs> wow. You guys made it safe? Yeah, we you dropped two of the six packs, so not safe. But you ever get in trouble uh, from your drinking? You ever uh, get arrested? Yeah, or, yeah. It's more like cocaine. I can't tell yeah. he's drunk, can you? <laughs> no, 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 I'm drunk. shaking like a motherfucker right now. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm nervous as shit. Just I love say this, this mantra with me: Heart stars, horseshoes, clovers and balloons. Heart stars, horseshoes, clovers and balloons. Heart stars, horseshoes, clovers and balloons. It takes it takes it right out of you. I got. I'm good. Well, so, yeah, we're the, you're, like you're you the best writer of the night. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Best performance, in my opinion, of the night so far as well. Thank Josh, well. Uh, what do you... Uh, what do you... Uh, what's your love life like? I actually broke up with my girlfriend of three years about 
three months ago. Wow. And then I got a new girlfriend and two weeks later. Damn. <laughs> what made you break up with your girlfriend in three years? Uh, just, just it was enough, you know? It just wasn't enough? No, it's enough. <laughs> oh, yeah? It was enough. Why? What was it? What do you it think? Like, what do you think the final thing was? It was said? comedy. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, you're not spending enough yeah. time with me. I need you, that kind of thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> we'll see how that yeah. goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Gross. Well, what a loser she is, right? Yeah. <laughs> She's got a good job in <laughs> Uh So this new girl, where'd you meet her at? Two weeks uh, the later. Bar. Where? The at the bar. bar that you were working at. Yeah, one of my servers, her best friend. Apparently, she'd been like lurking around for a while. Wow. So once you became a free agent, you found out. Yeah. That's and right. then what like did LeBron, you do? I just go from team to team. Hell yeah. What was date number one like? <laughs> or did you just take her home from the bar that night? Uh, she actually came in and brought me gummy worms and a note that said "call me" with a number on it. Wow. And for a guy that looks like you, that bag of gummy worms <laughs> means the shit's on. Right. Might, it might as well have been a fucking wedding ring you were accepting. <laughs> Ready? Hell yeah. Once you see that fucking bag of gummy worms, <laughs> it's love. That's right. So what happened? They were sour, too. You, you, you called her that night? Uh, yeah. And uh, what'd she say? Like, hey, how are the gummy worms? <laughs> Do you like them? I didn't know whether to get them or not. <laughs> no, like when that. I called her that night, she said, uh, she said uh, <laughs> please leave your message for Juliet Simone. <laughs> it was like four in the morning. I got off. Oh. It was a voicemail joke. It was bad. My how, bad. How big is this girl? Huh? How <laughs> large is this woman? Uh, she's, she's small. She's a small lady. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the why last that, one, though. Why is that interesting to you? Because that's a first date move. You're bringing over food. You're bringing over bright sour crawlers. <laughs> <laughs> you think a skinny girl is delivering that in your mind? No. In my mind, the largest woman in the world is delivering. Is like, do you like me? Do you like me? Is, not a uh, skinny lady. Let me ask you this. Is the new girl that you got two weeks after the last one, is she smaller than the previous yeah. girl? Yeah, it is. That's a, that's a good thing. That's like the iPhone. When you move up, you always want it yeah, to be smaller. Like the the better one. bigger, though? Yeah. Smaller, sleeker. <laughs> right. Yeah. Look at the look on Jeremiah's face right now. No headphones. I'm not buying it. What do you consider a skinny woman? <laughs> Oh, you know, she was just 350 pounds. Yeah. You know, she's, she's a light one. She's not a lady. Light in the loafers. So, all right, and uh, and then what? Did you have sex with her that first night? No, I was like three times in. Yeah, I picked up her stomach and I went right to town. <laughs> <laughs> so what else, Josh? What do you do for fun down in San Diego when you're not drinking and you're That's not going when you're not guarding the wall? <laughs> <laughs> Is she I, uh, Asian, your girlfriend? Because you look like a wild ling. I, just, <laughs> I drink. <laughs> I just drink and do a lot of drugs, man. You do. You drink and do a lot of drugs. Yeah, Fuck, yeah. stop doing that, but yeah. Wow. So you're like Bam Margera on the inside and outside. <laughs> I'm skinnier than Bam Margera. I love that. I got a question. Yeah. Uh, when you ask everybody if they like cooking shows, why don't you just do your cooking show That's show? That's yeah. All right, just Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's really because you're that was risking one thing I was like, you're risking I people say going, no, we don't like that. Just yeah. do it. You're gonna do it anyway. The just subtext is, I like cooking shows. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, it's true. That that question. I changed so. the last one too for this right here. The last one it used to be, it used to be uh, uh, garlic or black garlic and then uh, whatever and then chickpeas, but it was garlic or butter before, and I feel like I said garlic too much. God, that's hilarious. Thanks, man. <laughs> I'm fucking shaking up here. I'm next to Tom Herrera. What do you fucking imagine? Don't say garlic too much. You might scare the last comic away. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Kreps, ladies and gentlemen, uh, his first time on Kill Tony. We're moving through it. It's been all first timers on the show so far. So, why don't we do something fun? There's someone out there in the audience tonight who uh, signed up for the show who I know I've seen on the show multiple times. We've had her on here multiple times, including since the first year that we were doing this show. So uh, since we don't have a regular right now, why don't we bring her up to do a new minute. You know her, you love her. It's the great and powerful Missy Martinez, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, so uh, there's been a rash of porn star suicides lately, and I know what you're thinking, why couldn't I have been one of them? <laughs> um, but sometimes mental illness and porn go hand in hand. I'm on bipolar medication, but it only works 50% of the time, so now I'm just bi. 
And I also have a seizure disorder, but before you start feeling bad for me, just realize I save a lot of money on vibrators. <laughs> but there's also, you know, some bad things that come with having mental illness and being in porn. Like, I have OCD, so I can't do glory hole scenes because I know how dirty men's restrooms are. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's... But there's... Uh, <laughs> There's also some good things about having severe depression with being in porn. You know, I give a lot of foot jobs, so that way I'm, it's more easy for me to uh, pull a shotgun with my toe. Yeah. <laughs> That's my time, guys. Fuck yeah. Missy Martinez. Oh. Is your back real? Huh? Is your back real? My back? Yeah. My, my back? Yeah, I'm built like a refrigerator. I, I, I gotta tell you, I'm a fan. Oh, thank you! You have excellent taste and are gonna live forever. And uh, you know what I like most of all is your scenes with other women. Thank because you. Because, you know, to me it's not about the sex, it's about two women getting along that well. Rare. Rare. When worlds collide. Missy Martinez and Dom Irera. I love that. Uh, yeah, I, I love how you always have a new minute about, and you're able to write about the shit that we actually want to hear about, which is, you know, in your porn world. And uh, in fact, Brian made no secret about it. He's next to me right now. Are you going to tell the people what you're holding? Oh, I've minute? been using your uh, pocket pussy the whole time. Yay! Uh, this is actually your vagina right here. That is my vagina. Fish smells sold separately. There you go. No, Look at it. That's, they molded her vagina. You just licked it, dude. Okay. It's wet. And it's lubed up. That's the no. first time it's been wet in a long time. Oh. Um, there you go. How right. often do you get to hear a girl make a joke about her rubber pussy? You know what I mean? <laughs> Why don't Red they call pocket pussies a lipsticles? Red Man, this has reached an ungodly, creepy level. <laughs> yes, it's very weird. Like, Whenever you're ready. Like, like, this is the, like, one of the strangest things. Like, I, I consciously thought while you were doing that, did I really put on my green tights for this? <laughs> <laughs> You've never used like a, a, you know, a pocket pussy before? No, but not to call. I haven't brought it to the lady and been like, this is your pussy that I have in my hand. Well, Jeremiah, look at the pussy. Isn't this you right here? She gave Can you take a picture pussy. of me I'll holding your pussy next to your pussy? <laughs> Can you please? I'm just a lonely bridge troll. That's all I need. Fuck yeah. She gave me the, the pocket pussy. It's, I did not bring Hey guys, is it just, it's just me or was that set kind of dirty? <laughs> <laughs> it was very dirty. Uh, where can people find your uh, your pussy? Good job, Johnson. Uh, besides all over the internet and uh, behind 7-Elevens worldwide, um, shop.johnson.com. Yeah. Wow. It's cool. It looks just like it. Wow. And it's uh, antibacterial Scylla gel formula. Perfect Unlike handheld size. Thing. You know what she told me backstage is that her and her guy, uh, actually, she, they put this inside of her vagina and he fucked the fake vagina inside of her real vagina. I'm a keeper. Wow, that's like, <laughs> damn, that's like when uh, a baseball player puts like the weight on the outside of the bat and swings it around so that yeah. he's ready for when the actual thing happens. He's so stronger. much ambition for something so disgusting. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, well, that's fun. What else is going on in the world? I don't know about you guys right now, but I am rock hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's called plastic I think you mean now. Blarney stoned. <laughs> So, uh, like, uh, how's work been? Work's been good. I'm actually uh, making the step to directing now, so this fucked up mind's going to go crazy. Wow. A little That's up, interesting. Moving up the artistic scale. Huh? Exactly. What's something you'd like to shoot? Uh, you. You know, uh, I, I just want to push the boundaries. I want to get weird with it. Directing is like holding the iPhone nowadays, right? Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I get to tell people where to come now instead That's of being good. told where it's like, going to come. Not in the Hyundai. Get it out. Yeah. Were, were you ever in the mother mother and daughter exchange club? Any yes. Of those? That is so. Could you tell them about that? Because I think it's so beautiful. The, the share. Well, well, when two people love each other very much. Um, no, the mother daughter exchange club is exactly what it sounds like. Mothers and daughters swap. So I'm. I don't want to fuck my daughter. I'm going to fuck your daughter. You fuck my mom. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my God. Wow. That's a real thing. Well, it's a faux real thing. Oh. 
Yeah. Wow, I love it when things are so powerfully weird that the whole audience goes completely yeah. quiet. Yeah, yeah. Like, They're in like shock. If I could, right could have taken a picture right at that moment of everybody's face. <laughs> The look on 100% of the audience's faces when the mother-daughter fuck club was mentioned. And explained. I mean, really, the explanation, it just, like, stuck. Now, when you guys uh, do, do a film, do you, is it good to be at the end or at the beginning? Um, you want, either want to be the first scene in the film or the last scene in the film, because usually mm -hmm. the middle ones are fillers. That's like when the guy gets up to get a sandwich. Or what if, what about if you just can't home. last uh, more than the first scene? Yeah, so it's usually you want to you want to be you know the opener or the closer, yeah. just like in comedy. Okay, Fuck you, yeah, you, you know so much about it too. I I've mean, been here for nine years. She's not just an actress; she's a producer. What? <laughs> Seriously, I, I've been watching you since you know you were a kid. Oh, when I was a newbie! <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Thank you. You have excellent taste. <laughs> Truth is, he really is. He's a, uh, you know, uh, no, we have Dana Jaromon right there Dana also right, in the audience. Hey, peer, 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 peer. <laughs> All right, Missy. Well, always fun, always, uh, always interesting. Uh, there you go. Keep doing it. Another great new minute from the stylings of Missy Martinez. It's Good job. Missy X Martinez on Twitter team. and Instagram and all that good stuff. You know what, before we go back to the bucket, why don't we do something else fun? Uh, I'm going to bring up a guy who people have been uh, hounding me about on the internet. He's done the show a couple times. Uh, you know him, you love him. I'm excited for Dom Irera to get to see this guy. A lot of people, including myself, are thinking that this is a very, very promising young comedian. Put your hands together for the great and powerful Malcolm Hatchet, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What up? What? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> you ever feed a homeless dude and he still complain? <laughs> Other I gave this homeless guy some fries. He's like, hey man, my fries cold. I said, oh yeah? Well, take him home and heat him up. <laughs> 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 I know a dude with bad teeth, but his breath smell good. His teeth look like a Steeler jersey, but his breath smell like watermelon. I'd be like, come here and give me a kiss. I used to work at McDonald's. White women come to McDonald's and make beats when they order. I'd be like, hey, walking to McDonald's, they'd be like, um, yeah, let me get a... And then they ask questions. How's the salad? Bitch is green, I don't know. <laughs> Other day I was walking down the street, cop told me to freeze, I froze. Then he told me to put my hands up. I said, officer, I'm froze, you gotta unthaw me. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm Hatchet. <laughs> Dropping the hammer on Kill Tony for the third time in a row. Fuck yeah, Malcolm. Fuck yeah. You are a badass motherfucker, dude. Dress like when the Fresh Prince literally got dropped off in Bel Air. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, I'm uh, again amazing set. Let's get that out of the way first. Unbelievable, fun stuff. We love everything about your stand up. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys something. Malcolm, I started following him on Instagram and. I thought it was funny the first time on the show, one of the first things that you talked about, I asked you what you do for work, and you gave an answer. It was, I eat Carl's Jr. and I quit jobs. Yeah. Or I quit jobs and eat Carl's Jr. And I'm like, that's funny. That's a funny thing that he said that night. And I remember I asked you, like, how many jobs have you quit? And you go, like, I think you said like, something like 15 or 20 this year so far. And every, again, everybody laughed. I've been following you on Instagram for a couple weeks, and I've watched all of your Instagram stories, and I fucking extremely highly recommend anybody who's on Instagram to immediately follow him, Malcolm H12 on Instagram. Yeah, two a.m. And since I've been following him on Instagram and watching his stories over the last two weeks, I have seen him only eat fast food, and I've seen him quit about seven jobs <laughs> in two fucking weeks. I'm not kidding. This shit is unbelievable. He's working weddings, getting in trouble, weddings. taking videos of himself while the wedding's going on, 
working at a warehouse, getting shit done, getting fired, quitting, everything. It is a goddamn anomaly. You are your own walking TV show. I love everything about it. How's life been since the last time we saw you? Fuck them jobs. <laughs> Dude, Malcolm, I literally, honestly, I just got fired. I just got fired from working weekends at my place. And when they were telling me, I thought of you to kind of soften the blow. So I want to say you're just, Hell you're yeah. out there fighting the good fight, man. Who needs to work, you know? Fuck you. You're an inspiration. Anything else in life going on? Like, I mean, uh, I got to meet your girlfriend. Yeah, she just went back home today. Yeah? Did you drop her off at the airport? Yeah. LAX. <laughs> yeah, of course. You're probably not springing for that ticket out of Burbank, right? Hell no. I was wondering which airport you went to. Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, LAA. For those of you that don't know, the other times that we met Malcolm, we found out that he just moved here from North Carolina uh, and uh, sleeps in his car really? next to a gym. Yep. And uh, but, he keeps it, but he keeps it clean. He, he even, even if he has friends over his place, he makes them take their shoes off before they get in the car. This is all Malcolm. <laughs> where, you, where, where in North Carolina? Winston-Salem. Outside of Charlotte. I know where it is. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Fuck, did you, yeah. Are you, did you go to college down there? No, well, I went to community college, but I, I quit there, too. <laughs> <laughs> he quits everything, Don. He quits everything. Uh, anything else happened this past uh, week? It was it good having your girl here? Yeah, it was cool. She came to. She actually came. I came, I had an open mic, and I got booked that same night on the show. And she like seen it because normally I would have called her. Oh, that's she was cool. like, oh, I see what you be talking about. Okay, you doing it? Let me ask you this: How long was she? <laughs> <laughs> you thought she didn't? But she there was a. No, she do, but she be tired of the shit, so she got to see it. She was like, mm hmm. Right. Uh, no, now now you, yeah. you sleep in your car. Did she sleep in the that trunk? Was, you know what's crazy? For the first two days she got here, my homeboy let me crash at his place because he was out of town. And she had a lot of money. I was like, let's get an Airbnb. She was like, nah, you stay in your car. I want to stay here with you. I was like, well, shit, let the seat back and go to sleep. That's when she came she in stayed in the passenger seat with you. That is yeah, fucking she, love. She came in December and she slept in the car for two weeks, too. You better put a wow. ring on that. <laughs> I had to roll the windows down because some breath stink. You know that it. Breath. <laughs> oh you, you, you know that in the end, it's better that you're bad at these jobs. You know that. Yeah. Because if you were good, then you end up doing that shit, and that's not what you want. So yeah, yeah. keep quitting. Yeah, yeah fuck it. Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 last job was cool, but the dude yelled at me. This is how it was. What was that job? What was that job? Oh, uh, we was making like 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 fucking. I don't, it was called, we made like dry fruit. Yeah, yeah. It was some healthy shit. I don't know. Uh -huh. Look, I, I was working there, right? I parked in the parking lot the first day. It was cool. Then the next day, I got there like 10 minutes early, parked in the parking lot. He was like, no, park down the street. So I went down the street and said, no parking. But I seen all the cars parked. So I parked and I went in. I asked this dude, I was like, yo, can I park down there and say no parking? He said, yeah, you good. And then the dude was like, do you work here or not, dude? I said, hell no, I quit. And I just left. <laughs> it was early in the morning. I ain't ate shit. <sighs> yeah. He was tripping. Do you ever quit a job and then go to your car and you're just so tired that you just immediately sleep in your car right outside of the job still? So that like when they're I got done? a joke about that, but yeah. Really? Yeah, no, I, I just write jokes after I quit. I'm like, this shit funny. Let me put this down. Yeah. Now, Malcolm. Yeah. I just, it's like all the times I've wanted to quit, you actually just did it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's amazing. I've had moments where I'm, I'm about to leave and you just left. Yeah. My, my. My W-2s are fucked up. Man. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared to go to H&R Block. Yeah, fuck that shit. I ain't got time. <laughs> I ain't found my taxes yet. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I fucking love you. I'm obsessed with you. You know, it's one of those crazy fucking things. Um, so everything's good, life's good. Yeah, life's good. Cars, joints, still thugging, you know me. People love you on the internet, man. You know this, right? Yeah. Get random strangers Tony. hitting me up about you all the time. Tony, I have a question. How do you stay Working fly? Out. Like, cause I, you're pretty fly every I time. I be going, I be here. going to the thrift shops. Let me see, I get enough money to get an outfit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you always have a good outfit. This shit was two dollars though. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I love it, man. I love it. All right, well, I don't know. What do you say we do something fun? And this reminds me of something crazy where every once in a while in my, one of my favorite entertainment things, pro wrestling, 
every once in a while, Vince McMahon on a Monday Night Raw will do something crazy that makes people excited enough to watch Raw every single week so that they don't just watch the big things. I'm finna fight. Now. <laughs> we in. I don't really want to wait to the five-year anniversary show to see you do a new minute on this show every single week. And if you'd be down, I say we just make it official right now that you're a new regular on the show. Standing ovation. Let it be known that Malcolm Hatchet is the first ever, ever male regular on the show. The first ever African American regular on the show. Oh, the, the, the claps just died out a little bit on that part. Crossing the gender and uh, racial boundaries here on Kill Tony. I mean, I just find you so fucking interesting, and I think it'll be a fun little challenge, fun thing for you to come out and get a new minute every week and perform in front of some of the best comedians who. Well, I, I, I have the I have the idea that you're gonna blow up real quick and get a lot of road work from doing this show a lot. And so I'm excited that you're gonna be part of it. How about that? Cool. Hell yeah, hell yeah. New minute every single week from now on from Malcolm Hatchet. You'll see him on the five-year anniversary show where maybe we'll announce another regular. Maybe not. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. Fuck it. It's the fucking Malcolm show now. That's the future right there. You guys ready to go to the bucket one more time? Have a human being try to follow that shit? Some innocent beast? The best I've ever seen. Yeah. On the show. No, it's it's just ridiculously sure entertaining. Is. I'm telling you, follow him on Instagram. Click on the top things. If you don't watch people's stories, you have to watch that guy's fucking stories. He's a truly funny human being. It's like a real show where he just quits jobs and eats fast food. <laughs> I can't even <laughs> believe it's real. It's always a different fucking job. All right, I pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Matt Price. <laughs> Uh, I'm a magician, and I'm sorry. Cool. All right, let's get into this. Ready? Check it out. Watch. These cigarettes are a bad habit. Every time we try to put them away, they come right back. It's weird. Yep, no one ever claps at that. It's cool. All right, we'll take it a little bit farther. Watch it go. If I squeeze it like this, look. Did I get it? Kind of? Yep. All right, I'll take it one step further. Look, I squeeze the cigarette. Look, not here. Not here. Here. I'll do one more for you, because I, here we go, why not, right? Here we go, watch it go, look. <laughs> People go, Matt, can you do that lit? I say, what makes you think I'm not? <laughs> Personal favorite. You guys seem to like the gross stuff here. Watch it go, look. Uh, that's all I got with the cigarette. I appreciate it. Thank you. Wow. Man. If you were a good magician, you would have made Malcolm reappear. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I love it. Uh, is this your first time seeing the show? I think you're the first magician that we've ever had on, other than the great uh, I've, I've Justin I've heard it a couple Wilmer. times. I've heard it a couple times. Very like cool. It. Where are you from? Florida. That's amazing. Do you have, uh, do you have, like, it seemed like you were really shoving it in your nose. Am I correct? It, no, I mean, there's it no looked, fucking way, though, I'm right? I'm just glad it looked good from back there. You're very you good sleight of hand. Have. Very impressive. Oh, it does you. not play well on a podcast, I'm Doesn't, sure. But <laughs> uh, so for you well, listeners. My buddy, my buddy Mikey McKernan told me to come on. So. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. And so did my buddy Preacher, too. But, yeah, you know. Preacher Lawson, Mikey McKernan, you're Two dropping my friends, they You want to pick up those names you just <laughs> dropped? <them. laughs> I'll do it well, every no, week just, if that's what it takes, you fucks. I'm just saying that that's how I know about the show. No, of course. No, absolutely. What do you do for work? Uh, I'm actually a magician, full time. A full time magician. Uh, yeah, wow. I just. <laughs> it, a minute's super hard for a magician, so it's. No, of course, I yeah. understand. So I just did what I was like. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll give it a shot and have some fun. I got on a potluck earlier. I'm a f oh, ah, potluck, you say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a full time. I feel uh, like you were waiting for that. I'm a full time night. leprechaun. <laughs> Things are coming up green. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, Matt, how long have you been a magician for? Uh, I've been doing magic for 16 years. Wow. 
Wow. We, we all start really young. Yeah. <laughs> Not something you get in. It's just all the slights and stuff, you know? Right. And I, I knew I was sitting there. I, I, I was like, I gotta, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to follow that guy. I just know it. For some reason, I had to. Really? Remember. Yeah, not like a premonition. It's called Magician's it. Intuition. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Arr. I just felt it. I was like, I know I'm going up next. I, I, can just, I don't know what it was. But I was like, shit, I'm going to have to follow this guy. All have right. you ever used magic, say, to like, you know, get ahead on something like, like pay a bill or like scam somebody? Have you ever done like a scam oh, type man. question? I... I'm a, well, I, I've been street performing for a long time, so that's what's been paying my bills, and that's like the extra. I, I street performed my way from Florida to here two years ago. So, wow. Yeah. How much for a blowjob? <laughs> <laughs> no. What part of uh, Florida are you from? <laughs> Fort Myers. St. Patty's Day, Reagan. And so now, do you still street perform? Uh, a, a little bit, but not as much as I used to. Yeah. You get regular work somewhere now. You yeah. The... Yeah, I do. I do clubs mainly. Oh, very cool. Yeah, just a feature spot for now. Feature spots for now. You know. Do you right. have like a sex trick? Like right before that's you have sex, you pull out condoms. Right. Whatever, you ever do anything like weird with? It? Yeah, exactly. You, you do your <laughs> cigarette trick with uh, trick with girls' assholes and things like that. Yeah. Uh, nah, nah. Make your dick appear bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that happens with time, I guess. But no, I um. I don't know where I was going. You ever swallow swords? Yeah, no. you, have, you have any weird specialties? Anything that uh, you like specialize in? Like I have one guy that's like the master of paper. His name is uh, Blake Boat. B O G T. Blake Boat. Yeah. Ah, the stormy seas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just stuff that you find laying around. You know what I mean? Like cigarettes, coins. Uh, Dead hookers. <laughs> Rubber pussies, you know, everything just is so laying nice. around your house. <laughs> just what you see laying around, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, huh. Right. Meet you What's your love life like? Do magicians get a lot of uh, pussy? No, I mean, I, I don't do bad. I don't feel like... You know. Rabbits are rather fond. <laughs> yeah. Man, this is just this is I'm an easy target. Do you use any animals for uh, for your nah. magic? Never. No, no. You, I just. Are you just saying dude, I that? Can, I can hardly feed myself. That's, what do you mean use? I'm not gonna take care of a damn animal. Hmm. Uh, you live by yourself? Uh, no. I got uh, I got two roommates. Yeah. Two roommates. Are they magicians? I just stopped living in the car, so that's. Cool. Are they magicians too? No, they're they're comics. Oh, okay. That's you were, your you were... greatest magic trick is stop lifting in a car. Yeah. No, what kind true. of car were you living in? Saturn View. Whoa. Yeah, but there were there were two other people in it, man. The good it thing about the good it thing... was me and two other people. You lived yeah. with three people in the, in a view. Yeah. Horrible in a Saturn view. view for four months. Wow. Yeah. You know the good thing about living in a car is you can always view Saturn. When all right, forget it. <laughs> It's hard I to feel, do a Saturn view joke uh, in this room at this hour. Some of the stuff I did. All right. Well. Do you ever cut a woman in half and realize you've just committed cold blood murder? <laughs> no, no, no. Answering the age-old question: What if Jim Gaffigan met Benjamin Buttons? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's true. How old do I look, Tony? Take a real guess, though. I like that you said Tony. So I'm gonna guess. 29. Nah, man. Now I feel like shit. All right. 23. Wow. Okay. Shit. Yeah. By the way, definitely don't ask people how old you look. <laughs> yeah. uh, start wearing hats and get some lotion. Would it hurt your feelings more if I told you that I'm usually pretty good at guessing people's ages? Like, I'm pretty fucking always <laughs> spot on. I was an a, it's, it's an illusion. It's, cool. it's the beard. It's the beard. Do you really I'm just think? hoping. I'm hoping it's the beard. What I pray, I've crossed my fingers and prayers. When did you start growing out the beard? Uh... Dude, I grow. Uh, I'm crazy hairy, bro. I, I, this happened. Uh, I cut it. I cut it about. Uh, Was it after your gerbil ago. died? <laughs> what else are you into? Gerbils what now. else are you into other than magic and comedy or whatever? Uh, I well, I mean, I found that you would kind of appreciate this. I used to be a part of a wrestling promotion. So Go on. I, yeah. What did you do in the wrestling promotion? Well, I was I was setting up the ring and learning how to take bumps and such. Really? Yeah. So you were going to be a wrestler at one point? Yeah. Did you ever, was, way were before you going to be like face panned out? Were was you your wrestler name the missing chromosome? I'd never got it. <laughs> well, as a thanks, guys. 
as a magician, thank you. Oh, as a magician, yeah. you're gonna wrestle with financial difficulty the rest of your I, life. Shout out to my wrestling I friends knew. over there from the Store Horseman podcast, Matt Edgar and Chris Burns. <laughs> Uh, do you have a move, a move that you specialize in nope. or anything like didn't that? Make like it that the, far, man. Are you ladies make it ready far. to be creeped out? Like anything like that? It didn't make it that far, man. Didn't make it that far. Give it up for Crow Magman. <laughs> Fucking Rick Hare, something like that, or? Nope, never made it that far, man. Never What's the national fruit of Ireland? Just setting up. What? Give it up for allergic to bee sting. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally just setting up the ring and yeah. you know, stuff like that, taking bumps. <laughs> yeah. so Put your so hands far. together for Bother McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> Bother McGregor? <laughs> no, I love it. Don't be mad at it. Don't That's walk off. I'm never Bother, sure. <laughs> Bother McGregor. <laughs> That's fun, man. You didn't come up with a wrestling character. You took bumps. You set up the ring. You never thought, man, if I'm, I, if I was gonna well, be a wrestler. They, they, they didn't encourage. You know, they wasn't encouraged. It was just more like learn the craft and then, and then you know apply everything else to it. <laughs> wow, Jeremiah, you know? give it up for is he gay Mysterio? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I get it, cause Ray and Gay son of a, I got it. Yeah. I'm on it. Are you gay? No. Oh no. Yeah, but that was all no, I thought <laughs> you were seriously curious. That's why the joke landed. No, no, I'm I love you. You want to make out? <laughs> My um, favorite wrestler is Hornswoggle. <laughs> You're working as a magician, so you won't make out very well. Financially, that is. <laughs> so it's, it's getting better. I, I went That's from a car to a couch. It's getting yeah. better. Do you it's get paid forward. gigs? What's up? Do you get paid gigs? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, in, in September, I'm doing a Florida tour back in my old hometown. Oh, very cool. That's in September. Yep. Where yep. can people get tickets for that at? You can check it out. You can find it on uh, my, my like page on Facebook. Oh, okay. That's cool. Well, you one one Matt Price. Or Matt Price. Instagram, one Matt Price. I'm sure too. they'll find you immediately on Facebook when they look up Matt Price, you dumb motherfucker. One, one Matt Price. One Matt Price. One Matt Price on All Facebook? All we need is Matt Price. Yeah. All we need is Matt Price. And uh, Instagram and Twitter, too. All right. And okay. I'm, there you go. For those of you listening to the podcast that loved his magic, go get tickets by looking up. <laughs> That's cool. Matt Price. All right. The, Matt, that's your time. Nice to have you Thank on the you. show. Yeah, Thanks for job, signing Matt. up, man. Thank that was awesome. Much. Great magic. Great magic. Probably better for uh, America's Got Talent than Kill Tony, but we did it anyway. That's Matt Price. You heard where you can find him. Josh Martin's going to be with me this weekend in Seattle at Bellevue's Comedy Club. Look at that drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt. Spur of the moment. Without knowledge, he made it about the leprechauns and about uh, us. There's another classic Dom Irera pick that we got. Have you seen Kill Tony, the book yet? No. You got to see this. You're on a ton of the pictures. Yeah, like seven, like yeah seven for once. I think, it's so cool. Ryan, we're we're, we're going to get you one. And uh, for those of you out there, you could get the book, RyanJBelt.com, for that. Skankfest, the weekend of July 14th. Kill Tony goes to Phoenix, April 5th. Nashville, Tennessee, April 21st. September 29th in Fort Worth, August 4th in Fort Wayne, uh, the one that I said earlier in Detroit, and uh, all those other dates are at TonyHinchcliffe.com and other fun places. Dom Irera is going to be in Las Vegas the first weekend of April in Rochester, New York. Uh, also, all those tickets are available at DomIrera.com, D-O-M-I-R-R-E-R-A. -R -R -E what else, Dom? I'll be in Kilkenny for the w first week after Memorial Day. We'll be in Kilkenny, Ireland. Yeah, the uh, Irish in May. Show. Fucking greatest people in the world. And uh, they do actually, they don't have those accents like you were doing. They do like real accents. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. We do uh, love those guys. We're going to be uh, a Providence, Rhode Island, too. I'm going to be in Providence, too. I love that club, the Comedy Connection. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Fuck oh. yeah. So uh, come see all of us in Providence. I'm there April 13th and 14th, and a, a bunch of other stand-up dates that I'm doing. Jeremiah's coming with me to, uh, what is it, Salt Lake City? Fuck yeah, that's in a few weeks. That's going to be a fun one. I'm actually going to be, I believe, there's a slight chance I might be videotaping some of those sets to, uh, who knows, maybe make another special that you can make jokes about, Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah Watkins, why don't you plug the other stuff you have going on? 
Follow me on social media at Jeremiah Stand Up and uh, uh, listen to my new podcast, Jeremiah Wonders. Uh, latest episode with Stephen Kramer Glickman. It is awesome. People are raving about that show. Jeremiah has uh, characters call in, and you get to see a wide range of his uh, skill set. It is an awesome, awesome an show. Awesome. And then uh, Dom Myrer will be uh, doing uh, stand up on the spot with me in uh, Austin, Texas, as part of the Moon Tower Comedy Festival. Fuck yeah, Patty Reagan. What's the national fruit of Ireland? Yeah. What? The cranberries. Ah! <laughs> Shout out to that awesome band. Fuck yeah, I love the cranberries. And also, uh, the Reagan and Watkins album, we are recording it next month, so it'll be out later this summer, y'all. Oh, yes. Our debut album. That's a fun show. Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Look at him back there. Come on, you can clap one more time. We made you laugh for fucking five bucks. Ungrateful oh, bastard, hey, Tony. Yes, I want. I want to give a shout out to Dano in Auckland, New Zealand, and Nick Jamone in Santiago, Chile. Thanks for watching. I'll be here next week. Peace out. Fuck yeah, Brian Redband. Hey, if you want to see Malcolm do a set this week at the Ice House Friday for the Death Squad show, and how about one more time for your new kill Tony regular Malcolm Hatchet? Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs>